Elden Ring isn't legendary. Somebody linked me this video to watch. We'll see if it's any good. In the year of our pandemic, 2021, more gamers around the world spent more time on average clocking into their favorite pixelated worlds, except China, LOL. Well, this what really oh yeah yeah they're not this isn't a big surprise to most people what's interesting is that i would consider almost none of the big budget triple a game releases to be especially good okay in fact the big budget games in my opinion were exceptionally bad during this time like usual i don't think this is circumstantial because games like that are developed like four or five years ahead of time so like you you can't go and be like okay well games developed at this time even though everybody was at home like were bad well yeah they were bad because it was developed two years ago games carried the industry on their backs in actually mm -hmm. crafting some memorable gaming experiences but i can't help but feel like there were no legends dropped during the pandemic but then came along february of 2022 well, wow and blam elden ring took the gaming world by the ball that's sack right. and slapped it around for months that's right in a good masochistic kind of way ER was a gamer's paradise with a boatload of content that dropped at just the right time for people to sink their tarnished teeth into. Yep. But I am arguing here today that Elden Ring will not be considered legendary against the test of time. Okay. Here's why. By the way, this is probably a good time to say that when we are talking about fantasy video games where you can slay literal gods, this is all subjective. I'm just trying to make an argument for my subjective opinion. Feel free to make yours. Now let's dive into the specifics of this game to really figure out what makes ER unique, but also let's discover what holds it back from reaching legend potential. I'd like to start out with a hot take. Even though Elden Ring has a multiplicity of incantations and weapons, only a handful of them are actually balanced enough to enjoy working with. An argument that can... Um... That's kind of what I thought originally, but I've gone and I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of people using weapons that are weapons I would have never thought of. Like, for example, the uh, the prelate's hammer here, for example, or like the Deathrite bird staff, and they do all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, I don't think that's really true. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of weapons in every game that are kind of below average. That's just what happens. And like, you know, in, because of metagaming, you're going to have more people that are going to end up playing a game and they're going to continue using like, I don't know, like Moonvale or Rivers of Blood or, you know, the Guts Greatsword or something like that. That doesn't necessarily mean that the other ones are unplayable. But yeah, I mean, of course, like in, in, in every single video game, there are weapons that are not used. Like I, I've watched, like I don't, whenever I watch Counter-Strike, I've never seen somebody use the riot shield, for example. Be made to the credit of Elden Ring is how many swords, whips, spells, mm -hmm. maces, bows, and finger are in this game. There's a lot. Surely so many options to choose from make the game more replayable, right? Well, not exactly. An issue that you may quickly notice is that all weaponry does not simultaneously gear up with your regular leveling. Mm -hmm. For instance, you could be a level 150 Unga Bunga build with plus 25 Bonkinator. Okay. But if you find a cool-looking high-faith required wizard staff, you can't use it, at least not without jumping through hoops first. First, you. Yeah, I think that's kind of the way the game is designed. And I do think that there is some, there is some legitimacy to this. That, like, would it be better if... Because, like, you can respec, and it's not that big of a deal at Renala, for sure. But, like, for example, leveling up a new weapon. I would like if I was able to level up a weapon, and then all my weapons are just that same level. That way, I could, if I got something new, I could try it out. Because oftentimes, whenever I play games like this, I do feel like after I start leveling and investing into one weapon, then I don't really want to go and try a bunch of other weapons, because it's like, well, I just got this one. And this is my best weapon. You must re-level your character, then you've got to use a truckload of consumable smithing stones at the blacksmith. Yeah. But wait. Th now, they did partially solve this problem in Elden Ring with the uh, smithing ball bearings that you can get out in the world, and you can buy as many of them as you want. Oh no, you don't have all the correct amounts of smithing stones and the runes to upgrade them. Time to Google. 
Where can I find yeah. smithing bell bearing plus five? Then you have to go clear out the dungeon, obtain the bell, and pray you have enough runes to rank up your staff. I don't understand. I think how the pe rune arguments. Like, I mean, not really. Runes are pretty easy to farm in the game, but like everything else, yeah, I could see that. People can make the argument that Elden Ring has such great possible mm -hmm. build diversification when this glaring problem I've described exists. To me, well, I think that. That, I don't think that problem is is counter to build diversity. So, for example, like there's a lot of build diversity in many games, but that doesn't mean that you can do all of the builds at the same time. So whether it's like uh, I'm trying to think of a, a game like in WoW, for example, like there's a lot of different builds that you can go and do in like classic WoW. And they're all pretty different and very diverse. And, you know, playing a, a mage in classic WoW is very different than playing a warrior. Uh, you spam another one button rotation instead of, uh, you know, Frostbolt. It's Bloodthirst or, you know, fucking Whirlwind. So I, I think that with a lot of these cases, having the ability to respec doesn't mean that there isn't a massive diversity of weapons and tools. Because from my perspective, I think that Elden Ring has more diversity probably in builds and the way that you can play the game than all of the other Soulsborne games put together. Like, if you look at it and you compare, like, there's, like, blood loss, there's, like, sleeping, uh, fucking, like, magic damage, incantations, melee damage, stagger damage, using your shields, having ashes of war, like, all of these different consumables, crafting your own stuff. Like, there are a lot, yeah, jumping, uh, being able to jump, poison, scarlet rot. Like, there's so much different stuff you can do. And, and, like, a good example of this is, like, where is that fucking video that we watched the other day? I'm trying to find it. This guy. Look at this motherfucker. This, this cocksucker just sat there and put this bitch in the furnace. You weren't able to do this in, like, Dark Souls 3. Or Dark Souls 1, at least, I mean, I don't think so. Like, not this exact same thing. Yeah, this is fucking badass. So I, I think that actually Elden Ring does provide a massive amount of uh, a build diversity. And that's why videos like this are so funny. Is because you get to actually see what that means. Me, the logic that this somehow adds to Elden Ring's Let legend status yeah. shatters faster than Kanye West's Adidas contract. And, Which apparently might be getting renewed. And I recently heard a genius solution to this problem that I pray will be implemented in some future game. Uh -huh. Tell me how this sounds. Instead of upgrading each individual weapon with smithing stones, you instead would upgrade the smithing anvil to be able to upgrade all types of weapons up to a certain level. This would eliminate the tedious and unfun need of obtaining upgrade stones for every single weapon. If you don't think that sounds like a fantastic quality of life improvement, you and I clearly have different ideas of what makes video games fun. I um, I, I think that there are a lot of mods that allow you to do that. And that's an interesting idea for sure. And for example, like Sekiro kind of works like this in, in, a, in an abstract way. You don't have to farm Titanite shards in Sekiro. You don't have to farm smithing stones or anything. Uh, you're, you just have your sword and it gets stronger on its own. So I don't think it's necessarily a good thing to make people have to farm out every single item every single time. But as you'll see with a lot of the mods that are probably going to come out for Elden Ring, and this is the case with Dark Souls 3, is many of the, of the, the items that you got in Dark Souls 3, like Cinders, and I think Convergence is the same way, you're just able to upgrade more of them. Like, th that's actually how a lot of these games work, is that you don't have to upgrade a bunch of items. You can just upgrade one item, and then everything is universal. I personally would rather be getting my face smashed in by Radagon's hammer than running through unnamed dungeon number 23 looking for the next smithing stone. Point two against... Uh, looking for more smithing stones might take too long... I can see why somebody would feel this way. And I, I do think that he... I know that a lot of people are going to disagree with what he's saying. But I don't think that it is unreasonable that somebody would be frustrated whenever they get a new item. And they're not able to get more items to upgrade their item. Sure. I do think that, again, Elden Ring solved this problem better than any other game. 
but hopefully they try to you know solve it even more and mods will continue to do that as well elden ring's reputation is its player versus player content mm -hmm. you know it i know it we all know it the multiplayer balance of elden ring is genuinely bad and unrewarding is there anyone out there that feels especially driven to continuously grind er pvp i'm sure there's a small dedicated group i think this has always been something with every dark souls game like there's nothing unique with uh with dark souls or sorry with elden ring pvp that isn't the same with Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. Like, I, whenever I'm watching a clip and it's a Dark Souls 2 PvP clip, I know something stupid's about to happen. Somebody's about to get backstabbed whenever they're 20 feet away from somebody. Uh, there's a person that's about to hit them and they stand still and they don't take damage. Yeah, 100%. Every single one of these is bad. I think it's just the netcode. I find it humorous that in the latest official Elden Ring tournament, mm -hmm. a long list of banned weaponry and spells was necessary to maintain some semblance of fair PvP combat. This is not good. That's not why they were banned. So the reason why you ban weapons is actually to create diversity. Because if you have something that is so powerful and so over overpowered and good then that's going to completely dominate the entire uh the entire like competition so you have to ban like the the top five meta things if you want to have a competition that isn't just of those top five meta things like my staff yeah it, because everybody will use it exactly because the reason why rivers of blood everybody uses it is because it's really good it's like insanely fucking good Maybe just rebalance them. I mean, it's easy to say, but the truth is that I don't think that Elden Ring really should. It's not a PvP game. PvP is something that you can engage in inside of the game, but PvP is not 50% of Elden Ring. It's like five. In an age where meta builds and min-maxing guides exist mm -hmm. online, it is only natural for gamers to gravitate towards the most broken combat tactics to ensure victory. True. This causes a frustratingly low amount of viable builds in a game where many yeah. claim variety to be its strong. And that's why the, the things are banned, is to remove that small amount of viable builds. Suit. You see, unbalanced multiplayer is one thing, but the other nail in the coffin is the current lack of incentives to work towards in Elden Ring's PvP. In uh, yeah, I think that's true. And if they had some form of covenants in Elden Ring... Uh, I think that would probably make the game better. Yeah, definitely. Sure. In previous titles, typically the player would bind themselves to a particular covenant, which would in turn reward them based on the number of PvP victories. Mm. Players were granted new spells, rings, and weapons. And this is what gave the player a real incentive mm. to engage in the multiplayer. Unfortunately, Elden Ring has none of these covenants at the moment. No unique rewards for victory, just regular great runes and the usual souls. I believe Yeah, I do think that PvP and Elden Ring it is simultaneously better because you have the Colosseum system. And I do think the Colosseum system is actually pretty good. I've used it before, I've played it, did it on stream, absolutely. However, uh, yeah, having covenants like this would improve the game. And this is something I remember there was like a Radakosker video that said the exact same thing. This severely cuts down the potential longevity of Elden Ring and is another chain dragging down its legacy. I know many people just skip the PvP altogether, mm -hmm. but to be fair, oftentimes a thriving multiplayer community might just propel a game to legend status. Isn't this game just completely filled with bots, though? Like, if, if you go and you look at the Team Fortress 2 spe uh, Steam charts, for example, uh, let's see if I can find this. Uh, what is this? Oh, I thought I was going to show some fucking bullshit. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right. Um, Team Fortress 2. So if, if you look at the game and then you look at the charts... Like, there's an ebb and flow inside of each game, or inside of each day, of about 10,000 players. 
and most games fluctuate between 100% at the highest, you know, like the apex of their, uh, of like the daily fluctuation and about 50% at the bottom. So like, for example, a game, uh, CSGO, uh, like Counter-Strike, you're going to see about this same type of fluctuation, right? 100% to 50%. And, oh, uh, I guess this is probably not the best example. Uh, let me just go with the top 10 games, okay? Let's do, like, PUBG, uh, Apex. There we go. Yeah, so it's uh, about 100% to 50%, 100% to 50%. Uh, you look at this one, 100% to 50%, 100% to 50%. Look at Apex Legends, 100% to even below that, 100% uh, to even below that, 100% to, like, maybe 30%. The point that I'm making here is that if you extrapolate this trend to Team Fortress 2, the assumption is that Team Fortress 2 might only have about 20,000 active players. Because the differential between highest and lowest is sometimes around like 15,000 players. So I, I don't really think Team Fortress 2 is a, a big success case. In its current state, ER falls short. Next, we have to discuss the main character of Elden Ring, the map. It seems like we all have a collective memory of finding yet another map fragment, which okay. unlocked another new landmass to explore. Yeah, something I like that. I sure. probably assured myself five or six times that there was no way the map would get much bigger. Yet I was. I, I had that exact same thing. Like, I remember that one time that I crawled down that tunnel and it was like that massive fucking like unknown city. And I was like, there's no fucking way it's this big wrong again and again and don't even get me started on when i found out there were also underground areas yeah. as well to give credit where it is well earned it genuinely boggles my mind that a game can have so much to explore and discover but therein also lies the problem with elden ring okay. the novel coin of discovery certainly has two sides once the excitement of stuff he cut it out before it showed that the ant threw him off the edge but the ant probably threw him off the edge yeah, he probably went off the edge after that one. I had it happen to me. Tumbling upon yet another reused dungeon miniboss wears off. Many hours of fun gameplay become monotonous on repeated playthroughs. I do think that this is a relatively decent criticism that the monotonous nature of a lot of the like small, like, uh, you know, little caves, etc. that sometimes you have to go through to level up to keep pace with the story can get boring whenever most of the bosses are not unique or interesting. Uh, and I do think that, like, if you go back, you look at Dark Souls 1, for example. Taurus Demon and also Capra Demon become base NPCs towards the end of Lost Isolith, for example. And um, the Pursuer in Dark Souls 2 becomes a mini-boss after you fight him inside of the castle before you fly over to the other fucking, that place with the, the three sentinels. And in Dark Souls 3, uh, let's see, the bosses in Dark Souls 3, are there any bosses? I feel like Dark Souls 3 is probably the best with this, and there's not that many examples of reused bosses. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a Crystal Sage. Dragon Armor? Dragon Armor isn't reused. How is Dragon Armor reused? Oh, Dragon Armor is reused, but it's reused as a base NPC in the DLC for Gale. That's true. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's it's reused once in the DLC. What I'm arguing is that in order for a game to be legendary, it has to be replayable for years. Finding a new map... For a game to be legendary, it has to be replayable for years. I don't think that's true. And I'll give a couple of examples of why I don't think that's true. So there are many games that have like a... You play this game once, and it's like, wow, you did it, you beat the game, that was great. So I'll, I'll look at some examples of this, and then I'll talk about some other ones. And um, let's see, I think a lot of people might play through Valheim once and complete it, finish that whole game. Uh, Sekiro, I think that there's not really a whole lot of... Like, if you look at, you know, like, think about build diversity. This is Dark, Soul, this is Dark Souls 1. Actually, no, this is Elden Ring. This is Dark Souls 2. This is Dark Souls 3. This is Dark Souls 1. I would say this is also Bloodborne. This is Sekiro. Sekiro has the smallest build diversity of any From Software game. 
And I think that it also has, conversely, the least replay value. Because a lot of the things that you do in Sekiro is going to be pretty much the same on your second playthrough as it was the first. People just really enjoy the combat compared to Dark Souls and, and like uh, Bloodborne and, and Elden Ring. But is Sekiro a bad game because most people probably only play through it once? No, I do not think so. Uh, I, I think also like um, it's hard for me to use like an example like the Stanley Parable or Hades, for example, because they're they're fundamentally built on repetition. Uh, I, I don't know if that one would really be a good a good idea. Uh, Cuphead, maybe. People might play that once and then be done with it. Jump King. But Jump King is, isn't really, I would say, a legendary game. Uh, I think a lot of like the Legend of Zelda games. Most people play through those games once. Uh, Final Fantasy games. A lot of people play through those games once. And, and then maybe after that, uh, they'll play it again like 10 years later. Uh, it doesn't make it, that doesn't make it bad. So I think replayability is indicative of a legendary game. Absolutely. But replayability is not necessary for a game to be legendary. There can be one-tap games that are totally fucking unique and amazing, and I would consider them legendary. Fragment after you have already beaten the game twice does not feel very exciting the third time around. You can only get teleported to Kaled so many times before it loses its initial dopamine hit. But I have another skate. I do think that's true that uh, Elden Ring probably has less replay value than something like Dark Souls 1. But I think also a big reason for that is that in order to go through Dark Souls 1 in a complete manner, you can do that if you're an experienced player in between 8 to 15 hours, depending on how you want to play the game. But in Elden Ring, if you want to do it in a comprehensive manner, you have to put a zero behind that. It's like 10, you know, like a, a hundred hours or 80 to 150 hours to do that because there's just so many things in the game. So he's right that this is the case, but there's like a guy on YouTube, like I watch a lot of his videos. His name is like Gino Machino and uh, he does all kinds. Of, maybe I'm pronouncing his name wrong. I'm sorry if I am, uh, but he does a lot of these like Elden Ring, like no hit runs. And the runs that he does take like an hour or like two hours. So it just depends on the way you're playing the game. Eating hot take here. ER does a lot of things and does them really, really well. Yes. But does it really bring anything new to the table? You see... Yeah, I would say that a lot of the weapon arts do bring something new to the table. And I think all of the different tools that the game provides for you do. And also, bringing something new to the table, I don't think is really necessary in making a game really, like making a game legendary. There are a lot of games that are just really, really, really good, and that's all there is to it. Like, Halo 3 is a great example of this. Halo 3 didn't really bring a lot to the table outside of Forge. The campaign was basically the same. Uh, it had Xbox Live. Halo 2 had Xbox Live. Nothing's new with that. But Halo 3 was the perfection of the formula. Halo 3 was the, you know, the, uh, you know, like the interesting nature of like certain weapons in Halo 1 combined with the multiplayer aspects and better design of Halo 3 or of Halo 2 without the outlier weapons like, of course, the, the pistol in Halo 1. And then Halo 3 was like the combination of all the best ideas in both games and then dialed up to 10 or 11, or whatever you want to call it. So I don't think that a game needs to do something new in order for it to be legendary. In my opinion, Elden Ring doesn't invent anything new or define a particular genre. It is the amalgamation of certain aspects of all the previous Souls games. So if we're yes. discussing legend status, Dark Souls 1 seems a far more influential title to the gaming industry due to the fact that it spawned the whole subgenre known as Souls-likes. Yeah. One argument might be that Elden Ring doesn't hold your hand in exploration. Or I would also say that if Elden Ring had come out in 2012, uh, I think that's whenever Dark Souls came out, 2011, 2012. If, if Elden Ring had come out at that time, people would call it Elden Ring-like. Mechanics. Essentially, it allows the player to follow their own intuitions and curiosities instead of relying on a mini-map with uh, yellow quest yeah. markers dotting the landscape. I've seen this. To throw an interesting question to consider is Dark Souls 1 an open world game? 
I personally think it qualifies. And even that game had a hands-off approach to exploration all the way back in 2011. To put it concisely, while Elden Ring has a massive, amazing open world, it doesn't evolve into anything truly new, which would uniquely influence the future of gaming. So, yeah. Did Elden Ring evolve something new that would uniquely influence the future of gaming? I don't know if there's like one, like I think Elden Ring did everything that it needed to do perfectly well, but there wasn't a lot of like massive changes that were just like totally innovative. Yeah, those are my main arguments. I don't think but they, I also they need to. to address some of the non-official Elden Ring content, okay. which often surrounds these types of games. You see, there are a fair amount of community-run niche veins in the Throbbing Souls community, yes. which typically lengthen the lifespan of these games. Right. Between the mods, speedruns, lore challenges, and other content-driven experiences, there are many ways to interact with Elden Ring besides vanilla playthroughs. Exactly, and that's what kept Dark Souls 3 alive for so long. However, I can speak to my own experience with speedrunning and challenge runs and say that Elden Ring is considerably less fulfilling and less rewarding to replay than other Souls titles. Okay. Speedruns as well as challenge runs are hampered severely due to the overwhelming size of the game. I do think this is true, that the game Elden Ring does not lend itself to speedrunning as much as other games do. Yeah, that's probably true. Sure. But I don't think that means that it's bad. There are a lot of games that are really good games that are not speedrun games. Not to mention glitch. He got the new, uh, I, I saw he got the, the world title back under 58 minutes clear of the entire game. It was nuts. The speedruns of Elden Ring are 90% riding torrent from one area to the next. Oh, look who it is. has certainly boosted the appeal of games like Fallout yep. or Skyrim. But in my opinion, it seems like most people aren't interested in modding ER. And this makes yeah. sense when we realize that most players are on console. Modding is less accessible to our console com I think the reason why there's not as many mods for, uh, for Elden Ring is because it hasn't been out that long. And also because the game is so big it will take longer to mod the game. Straight up. Like, that's why you see people that are making more Dark Souls 3 mods, even now. Because Dark Souls 3 is, is not as big of a game. Yeah, it, yeah, there's been quite several already, though. There have been several... Uh, and I would also say that I think randomizer runs in Elden Ring... <sighs> Let me think of a way to put this. I think that there is a very large, like, okay. Uh, let, let's look at three different games, okay? And this is the quality of each game at different points in time uh, for the game, okay? So we're going to look at uh, Dark Souls 1. And then we're going to look at Dark Souls 3. And then we're going to look at Elden Ring, Okay. I think that in Elden Ring, let me see if I can put this in here. Um, maybe like right now, right here, and then like right here. So this is where I think the quality of each game is best and worst, okay? So I think Dark Souls 1 is good from an from the beginning of the game to An Orlando. Like, the start of Dark Souls 1 to beating Ornstein and Smo in An Orlando is one of the greatest gaming experiences that has ever been made of all time without a question. But after that, I think the game falls off. Dark Souls 3. I think that there is a handful of bosses and just things that you have to do in the game, in the middle of the game, that is kind of boring. And it, it does kind of go on for a while. This is my personal opinion. 
around like Yorm the Giant, etc. Dark Souls 2? Sure, we'll do Dark Souls 2 after this. Um, but let's go ahead and just talk about this first. With Elden Ring, I do think that there is a middle of the playthrough lull. So like Dark Souls, like or sorry, in Elden Ring, the beginning of the game up until I would say like Renala or maybe Volcano Manor, or, or definitely after Morgoth, I think that there's a bit of a lull in the game until you get to the very much in-game bosses. And the reason that I think that is that at that time, you probably, your character has outscaled the game if you're playing it naturally and not trying to speed run it. So like by a time, how many of you guys got to Morgoth and just rolled them over because you were over leveled by that time? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that provides an experience that can be a little bit bland for, uh, for players. But then whenever you get to the end game bosses, like Fire Giant, Melania, uh, let's see, Radagon, obviously, Godfrey, and, and there's like a handful of other ones that I, I can think of, like the Death Right Bird, uh, that fucking guy out in like the hilltops of the giants, like Malakath, yeah, the dragons, then, then it gets better because those bosses are still like ridiculously fucking hard. But in Dark Souls 3, I do think that like there's very little dead time. Now for Dark Souls 2... Uh, let, let's look at how, how it works for Dark Souls 2. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let me make a, a little point here. Um, okay, yeah, that should be good. So this is the Dark Souls 2 experience. So basically, uh, this is the beginning of the game. This is the middle of the game. This is the end of the game. And the green part right here is the credits. Because finally it's over. Yeah, that's Dark Souls 2. So I do think that it's fair to say that Elden Ring, because of the length of its playthrough and the way that a lot of people will consume the content, there will be a lull where you outscale the game. Comrades, and there is no creation kit tool provided when trying to mess around with these hard-coded mm -hmm. Japanese files. Maybe this comes from my lack oh, of... Oh, by the way, if I was to do Sekiro, the, the entire bar would be green. And if I was to do Bloodborne, I think the beginning of Bloodborne is bad. It's not bad, but I think the... the, the like, if you take the game as 100%, the first 30% is not as good as the rest of the game. The reason why I think that is because I don't like the Blood Vial system and having to farm out potions... And farming out potions is much more oppressive at the beginning of the game because you're not getting runes at the same rate, but potions stay at the same price for the entire run. And it's the same thing with, like, bullets and shit like that. So that's the reason. Bloodborne is a great game. They're all great games except for Dark Souls 2. They're amazing games. But, you know, you're talking about, like, the best part of the game and the worst part of the game knowledge or awareness on the topic but modding souls games has always seemed less appealing to me than other titles either way most people don't mod let me so go back maybe this comes from my lack of knowledge or awareness on the topic but modding souls games has always seemed less appealing to me than other titles i personally i mean this is this is an opinion right so like it's not that he's wrong but i don't feel this way i had so much fun playing dark souls 3 senders I am so excited for that Arc Thrones mod, and there's a couple of other mods that I look forward to playing too. The Daughters of Ash Dark Souls 1 mod, I absolutely fucking hated it, but I loved it too. And I think it was, it was a fun experience. It was like you're, you, like playing Dark Souls 1 Daughters of Ash was like learning how to drive, but you can only use your rearview mirror. Either way, most people don't mod, so it seems unlikely mods alone would help solve Elden Ring's biggest drawbacks. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I love Elden Ring so much. Okay. It is certainly the best game I've played in years, and if I were to gush about yeah. all the things I liked, this video would be three hours long. Right. I just wanted to be honest and share some of the more interesting opinions I have, just for the sake of discussion. On that note, I've heard people say Elden Ring is a 10 out of 10, which I don't disagree with, but if that's true, the other Souls games are 11s out of 10 for me. That's how I honestly feel about it. You can take it or leave it. 
If you want to have further discussion around this game and many others, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I plan on posting very regularly. I'd love to hear your guys' different opinions and feedback, and I'll try to address them all in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time. Okay. Expansion announced. Hey, look. Yep. An interesting development has occurred whilst making this video. The Elden Ring video. DLC was announced to be in development. Listen, I'm yeah, it's going to come out in 2025. Hater. I'll also jump on the shadows of the Erd Tree, die twice, hype train as fast as anyone. My hope is that we will get to see more of the Foreskin Apostles in this expansion. Am I the only one that thinks they're severely underused in the base game? Yeah, I mean, there's only 30 of them in the game. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, I'll link you guys to video. This is this guy's just like a random. He might have just made the video because he wanted me to watch it, etc. So, uh, you know, there's the video. Give it a like. Give him a sub if you like it. And uh, probably just a viewer or something like that wanted to give his thoughts about Elden Ring. I figured I'd watch it. Why not? And it could also just be a random person and somebody saw it. So, anyway, um, I would say that this... Like, a, a lot of the points that he brings up, I think, are legitimate. And I, I do think that they are not... It doesn't mean that it makes Elden Ring bad, but I, I think that because Elden Ring is pretty much a perfected version of an existing formula, a lot of people don't criticize it at all. And I don't think that criticizing it for not having like some sort of crazy new innovative idea is is completely fair. Because, like, I mean, it's just a very, very good game. Not every game has to completely break the mold and change the way that you see video gaming. Sometimes games can just be good, and that's all they need to be. And I think that's what Elden Ring is. But I think the best way to determine it is I'll look at my own playtime hours. I think that's a really good way to tell which game actually is the best, in my opinion. So we have Dark Souls Remastered. I have 370, uh, 370 hours in Dark Souls Remastered. In Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, I have 84 hours inside of Dark Souls 2. Inside of Dark Souls 3, I have 213 hours inside of Dark Souls 3. I have played through Bloodborne two and a half times. So I would say my playtime of Bloodborne is probably somewhere around where Dark Souls 2 is. Like 80 to 100 hours. Uh, Sekiro is very minimal. Sekiro is 33 hours. And Elden Ring, if you look at where Elden Ring is, Elden Ring just came out last year, so it's not really a very good comparison. But I have already put 243 hours into the game. So, yeah, see, Sekiro... So Sekiro is the worst game, and Dark Souls 2 is better than Sekiro, clearly. But um, the point that I'm making is that, like, I've played all of these games a lot, and there is a big part of me. I think that Dark Souls 3 is a better game than Dark Souls 1. In like every regard besides world building. I think it is. I think it's just a better game. But I like Dark Souls 1 more. And I don't know why. I just do. I, I just really li I, I like Dark Souls 1 more. I don't, I don't know why. And, and I just play through it more. And if somebody else made a new mod of Dark Souls 1, I would play through it again. And uh, first off, yeah, maybe it's because that's the first one that I played. I'm not really sure. But, um, you know, I do think that there are things about Elden Ring that do come up short. But overall, I'm very happy with it. And if they made a new Elden Ring every year in the same way they made a new Call of Duty, I would be happy. Let's just say that. If only that could happen. Demon Souls, Green Red Bar. Uh, Demon Souls, I feel like Demon Souls follows the exact same paradigm as Dark Souls 1. Because the, the problem with Demon Souls is, like, after you clear one of the Arc Stones, and especially after you clear two of the Arc Stones, the first, like, the, the, the two-thirds of the next two Arc Stones are going to be easy for you. Because it's that's not the way the game's designed. The game's designed to go one, two, three, four, and then you go back, it's one, two, three, four, you go back, one, two, three, four. So the problem with that is that whenever you go into Demon Souls, like I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll uh Asmon Gold. And I play Demon Souls a lot because I think the remake of the game is probably one of the best remakes I've ever played ever. Gentlemen. Uh let's see. Can I I, I don't think this is the end of it, but let me just go and double check. 
Uh, Island's Edge. Okay, this part was kind of hard. Let me just see. I don't know. I kind of want um, to I want to I'm going to see if I can get to, like, one of the bosses. I would go online if I could, but I Okay, so most... Uh, I'll tell you this. I pretty much one-shot every single boss in this game besides Flame Worker. And the only reason I didn't one-shot Flame Worker is because I got him to 20% and I choked. And then I okay. tilted out and I quit the stream. I can't go online. I would go online. Yeah, I, and like every other boss, I pretty much one shot. It was no problem. So Demon Souls is a very easy game, and I do feel like at the beginning of it, like let me see if I can maybe find it. King's Tower, maybe. I don't know, man. I think it was in my third day of Demon Souls, and so it's hard for me to find it. Uh. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not seeing it here. I don't know why it's actually not not on there but uh anyway yeah at the end of demon souls whenever i beat it the very end of the ball of the the last arc stone that i did the one that had like the girl where it was like the simp that's guarding her at the very end and it's like are you the bad guy for killing her and it's like nah bitch like that's just the way it is and uh that boss was pretty fucking easy and like all of that arc stone was very easy and i killed most of those bosses pretty much effortlessly so I do think Demon Souls had the same problem that Dark Souls 1 had. Uh, and it goes Bloodborne Remake in 4K 60 FPS. Yeah, I wish that would happen. That would be fucking great, man. Yeah, Demon Souls' is Gauntlet on steroids. I think Demon Souls is great, but it's just not, like... It's not a ma... Okay. It's not a massively difficult game. Boys. That's really what it comes down to. Miracle. Yeah, it, 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 it it's not like it's impossible or whatever, but it is definitely, I would say, the easiest Souls game. And I think that it is the easiest Souls game by a very good margin. Like, I don't think even any other game is close to as easy I'm, as it I is. So much yeah, it's just linear. Yeah, and, and I think the game is just, it's very surface level game. That's why you don't see a lot of people making Demon Souls content. And I think also because it's PS5 only, so it's hard to like get into it. But um, even with that, I, I still think there's probably not a, just a lot of people making Bloodborne content, for example. So hopefully one day they will, uh, uh, they'll bring it to PC and maybe you'll see more of it. But the game just doesn't have the same level of depth that Dark Souls 3 or Elden Ring has. Uh, that's just the truth. And I don't think that means it's a bad game, but it's just not as big as, you know, other games.